In this video, I'll show you some tips I've learned over the years for making neat and tidy forms. In this video, I'm mostly working with plain boxes. Don't let that fool you. The techniques being demonstrated will work with any kind of graphic object. I'll start with ruler units. Panorama's rulers can display inches, centimeters, pixels, pica, and elite. I like to use pixels so that I don't have to deal with fractional numbers. All the dimensions will be pixels. If the ruler is displaying inches, I just click twice in the upper left to switch to pixels. There are 72 pixels per inch, so a half inch is 36 pixels, and a quarter inch is 18 pixels. It's hard to move an object precisely with the mouse. It seems like the position always winds up just a smidge off. For more precision, use the arrow keys to nudge the object into position. Start by clicking or dragging the object, then use the arrow keys for final adjustment. Each time you press an arrow key, the object moves one pixel in the direction of the arrow. If you nudge an object so that it lines up with another object, a light blue alignment guide appears. This makes it really easy to nudge objects into alignment. The alignment guide disappears after a few seconds. A unique feature of Panorama is that you can use the arrow keys to nudge the size of the object instead of the position. We haven't seen any other software that does this, so you may not be familiar with this but it is a very useful tool. Start by clicking on the corner of the object that you want to adjust. Then use the arrow keys to nudge. Only the corner you clicked on will move. The other three corners of the object will stay fixed. Light blue guidelines appear if the corner is nudged into alignment with some other object on the form. This makes it really easy to get all four corners of an object into position. When you're done nudging the corner, just click anywhere else on the form. To resize an object, you drag on one of its corners. Easy enough, but sometimes not so easy if you're working with a cluttered form. When you hold down the S key, Panorama expands the object corners to fill the entire object, making it really easy to click on a corner. For example, normally when I drag the middle of an object, it moves the object, like this down, dragging the middle of an object resizes the object. Depending on which corner the mouse is closest to, you can drag any of the four corners of the object. As you can see, the pointer turns white when the S key is held down, to remind you that you're in size mode instead of drag mode. Just remember that S stands for size, as holding down the shift size. key prevents you from dragging diagonally. This works at any time, but it is especially handy with the S key. Hold down both of these keys and drag left or right to quickly change the width of the object while leaving the height alone. Another unique feature of Panorama is the ability to resize multiple objects at once. Panorama analyzes the arrangement of the objects and adjusts them for you. This can save huge amounts of time. You have a column of objects like this. I start by selecting all of them. Now I adjust the width of any one of the objects. I'll hold down the shift key to make sure that the height doesn't change. When I release the mouse, Panorama adjusts the width of all the objects so that they still are in a neat column. Instead of a column, I may need to work with a row. Again, the first step is to select all the objects. Now I adjust the width of one of the objects. When I release the mouse, Panorama adjusts all of the objects to keep them in a neat row. It doesn't matter which object I adjust, Panorama will compensate by moving and resizing the other objects to keep everything aligned. Next, I'll try the same trick with a matrix of rows and columns. This is more complicated, but Panorama can still handle it. I can adjust the size of any object in the matrix, and Panorama will adjust all of the others to maintain the neat arrangement of the objects. This will even work when one or more objects are nested inside other objects, like this. When I resize an object in the matrix, Panorama adjusts not only the matrix, but the border around the matrix as well. Any selected object will be adjusted as necessary. So far, I've only been changing the width of objects, but Panorama will also adjust when the height is changed. Or, if I leave the shift key off, I can change both the height and width at once. Sometimes you need to work with objects that are concealed behind other objects. For example, you may have a transparent button on top of a graphic or a text display object. So what do you do if you want to modify the object that's underneath? 
One solution is simply to drag the top object temporarily out of the way, but there is another way to do this. To illustrate, I'll drag this blue rectangle on top of the pink rectangle. Now the pink rectangle is concealed and can't normally be clicked on with the mouse. There is a way to click on it with a special key, the command key on a Macintosh or the control key on Windows machines. With the special key held down, the first click works the same as usual, but the second click in the same spot selects the object behind the currently selected object. If there were additional concealed objects below, I could continue to hold down the special key to select a third object, a fourth object, or additional objects further below, but in this case there are only two. Once the concealed object is selected, I can manipulate it any way I want. I can change the color of the object, use the dimensions dialog to move or resize the object, or use the arrange menu to bring the object to the front. Before moving on, let's look at a more realistic example. Here I have a transparent button on top of a text display object. I'd like to modify the text, but I can't click on it because the transparent button is in the way. First, I'll toggle the graphic control strip so that I can see the type of object that is selected. Now I hold down the special key and click. Remember, the special key is command on the Mac and control on Windows. As you can see, the transparent button is selected. Still holding down the special key, I click again. Now the text display object is selected. To modify the text, I open the object properties dialog from the edit menu. Voila! I can now modify the text and all of the other options of this object. Database forms and reports often involve items that are organized into columns, rows, or matrices. Panorama makes it easy to set that up. I'll start with a single object. To make copies of this object, I'll drag it while holding down a special key. On the Mac, I hold down the Option key. On the PC, the Alt key. I'll also hold down the Shift key so I don't accidentally drag diagonally. If I don't get the spacing quite right with my drag, that's okay. I can use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the precise position of the new copy. Once the copy is precisely in position, I can make additional copies using the duplicate command in the edit menu. Each time I use this command, another duplicate is created. My work in precisely positioning the first duplicate pays off, because now each additional duplicate is automatically positioned with the exact same spacing. If it turns out the spacing was incorrect after all, that's okay. Panorama has a special dialog to adjust the spacing between selected objects. First, I need to select all the objects I want to adjust. Now I open the spacing dialog from the Arrange menu. The spacing between the objects is specified in pixels. Each pixel is 1 72nd of an inch. If you want the objects to touch each other, set the spacing to 0 pixels. For a narrow margin between each object, set the spacing to 1 or 2 pixels. I can make a row of objects the same way I made a column. First, I Option-Shift-Drag a copy of my original object. Then, I nudge it into exact position with the left and right arrow keys. Once the position is exact, I use the Duplicate command to make additional copies. If I need to, I can adjust the widths of individual objects in my row at any time. To make a two-dimensional matrix, first make a column or a row. Then select all of the objects and Option-Drag to make a copy. Use the arrow keys if necessary to adjust the position of the copy. You know the drill by now. Use the duplicate command to make additional copies. Of course, in real life, you are not usually going to make a matrix of blank boxes. But this technique will work with any kind of panorama object. For example, suppose you wanted to create a row of radio buttons for diff different shipping options. Start by creating the first checkbox. Once the first checkbox is set up, I option drag to create a second one. Then use duplicate command to make more. Now I double click on each checkbox to customize it. And finally, I adjust the widths of each checkbox as needed. You'll find that it is much easier to create a group of objects this way than it would be to create each object from scratch. The tips in this video should help you create organized and symmetrical graphic layouts quickly and easily. 